Welcome to today's talk. It's Tuesday the 10th of August. Now I'm going to focus a bit on children today and the problems with children in various countries, the Indonesia and the United States. Um, but more on that in a minute. Let's just do a bit of general orientation first of all. So um, United Kingdom cases are actually just starting to go down again now. Today's figures were about 23,000 down slightly. United States still going up. Ireland still going up despite the vaccination campaign. South Africa basically levelling off, but it's the middle of their winter. Japan going up. Canada probably going up a bit, as we saw reasons for yesterday. And Australia, sadly, as well, we see cases now increasing, particularly in New South Wales. Um, relating that to testing, we see that the UK is testing a lot, so is Australia. Surprising how little the United States is testing, to be quite honest, and South Africa and Japan. Well, the figures in Japan mean essentially nothing because, I mean, Japan basically is hardly testing at all. In South Africa, we ran out of data a, a while back. So um, amazing how little testing Japan are doing. So real cases in Japan guaranteed to be a lot higher than, than the figure, official, official figures are showing. It's almost as if they're trying to keep the cases looking low while the Olympics was on. Um, so that is the testing. Now, um, variants, of course, UK, Australia, United States. Well, it, it's, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's all Delta variant, oh, virtually all. OK, there's a little bit of Alpha variant left there in uh, Ireland and uh, Japan. But basically, we are now in a, uh, a Delta variant pandemic. That is what we are now in. Just a few other countries briefly, uh, new daily cases per million in Asia. So Cambodia, Myanmar, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, United States by comparison, Malaysia still high. But as we'll see, the testing in these lower countries is poor. We believe the situation in Indonesia is really quite bad at the moment, but not really shown on this statistic. But when we look at the uh, the testing there, we realise that Malaysia is testing most, the United States testing a, a bit less according to that. Um, Cambodia testing a bit more. I believe that. I don't know quite what's happening in Cambodia there. I'd have to find that out. Vietnam, the testing has increased a bit, but um, Indonesia, Philippines, Burma, basically we don't know. The testing is is remarkably low. And the information we have on variants there, the United States, Indonesia, Delta variant. Cambodia in the process of moving from Delta variant, uh, it, it, from moving from Alpha variant, the UK, Kent variant to the Delta variant first identified in uh, in India. So that's just a bit of ori orientation. Now, moving on to the United States, unfortunately, we see that cases are in the 120,000 range there. Quite an uptick in cases, quite a big increase, really, in the States. More on that in a minute. Um Hospital admissions in the States also going up fairly sharply, unfortunately, at the moment. And we also notice that vaccinations in the States are tending to pick up now, which, of course, is remarkably encouraging. This surge in the Delta variant has perked interest in the States. So uh, some problems and some encouragement there in the States. So that was the cases in the States there. Now, 20% of those cases at the moment are in under 18. So this is quite a high proportion compared to what we've seen in the past. That was the hospitalization figure. Hospitalizations highest in Florida, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, southern states where vaccination was low. And uh, we can clearly see that uh, sharp temporal correlation there between the low vaccination states and the high hospitalizations states now. Um, now, um, vaccinations in the States generally, uh, first vaccine up to 73.02%, uh, second vaccine up to uh, 62 so that one's 73 for one dose, and that is 62% uh, for the, the second dose. And we are seeing that line going up a little more sharply now, which is encouraging. Now, in children in the States... Um, 7.1 uh, million under the age of uh, 17 have been uh, vaccinated. 12 to 17s uh, represent 39% of the children, uh, representing 39% sorry, sorry, of 16 to 17-year-olds. And 27% uh, of 
15, uh, to 12 to 15 year olds. So we see that it's the older children that are more vaccinated, well, 16 and 17 year old teenagers, really. Lower proportion of, uh, so if you take all the 12 to 15 year olds in the country, 27% of them have been vaccinated. And this is partly what we're going to look at today. Just before we get to that, Pentagon, uh, Pentagon mandatory vaccinations for 2 million staff working in defence. Texas hospitals are nearing capacity in certain areas. Houston are quite quite bad at the moment. Florida, uh, new cases in Florida, for example, 22,903 in the last 24 hours. Uh, the third pandemic high of the week, in fact. Um, 179 paediatric patients in hospital, so 179 children in hospital and 5 to 18 year old education K-12 opens today basically in the state. So basically children flooding back to the classroom um, as we speak. Uh, now, the governor in Florida has uh, said no mandates in the state of Florida. And I just watched that clip. It was just on one of the news channels, but... Um, he was surrounded by uh, young young women who all burst into cheers and applause as soon as he said that. In the UK, we call that donutting, where, where someone who wants to look important, they surround themselves with the sort of people that they want to um, surround themselves with. Um, not that I'm saying he wants to look important. Um, so, uh, Governor, no mandates in the state of Florida, whoopee, individual freedom. Uh, this is also true in Arizona and Texas, I believe, where the, gov the governors have mandated that uh, people aren't allowed to uh, mandate mask wearing in schools. Despite the CDC on the 27th of July saying everyone should wear masks in schools. So presumably the proportion of uh, funds from Florida that go to the CDC are, are wasted because the Floridian governor, governor is not taking advice uh, from the CDC. Um, in fact, it gets even worse. Um, any school superintendent in Florida mandates mask wearing, risks risk losing their school income, apparently. Um, that's worth watching, actually, because there's a paediatrician there actually bursts into tears advising people to wear masks. So we have the paediatricians all gathering round in groups saying, please wear masks in schools. And we have them, the governor saying, nope, you're not allowed to mandate masks in schools. And if you do, I'm not going to pay you. I mean, it really makes you wonder why we bother with paediatricians. I mean, we have these people that dedicate their lives to science and the medicine of children, but the government, the politicians know way more and can just overrule them. So why don't we bother? I mean, hopefully the politicians will start going around hospital wards now, diagnosing and prescribing drugs for our children as well. It just beggars credulity. We, it, 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 you know, watching someone like that, saying something like that in a senior position, as an outsider, you know, I just... I just don't understand. I don't understand how how can he how can someone be so arrogant as to as to, as to think they know better than the, the pediatricians in their own states? It's just there we go. I made my point. Pediatricians disagree. Uh, Doctor uh, Aline uh, Marty, Florida International University. Our children's hospitals are completely overwhelmed. Our paediatricians, the nursing staff are exhausted, the children are suffering. It's absolutely devastating. Our children are very much affected. We've never seen numbers like this before, but the governor has banned mask mandates, which we know will be efficacious. Pfizer and Moderna are working on vaccines for 5 to 11-year-olds by the end of the year. So that looks like it's coming in the States. Um, pretty likely that that is coming in the States. But not until... Um, the end of 2021. Now thinking about all of the United States, again in the context of children, um, children in hospital 1,450 in the states, bear in mind this is for 50 states so is that high or not you can decide. 400 child deaths so far from COVID. Um, put that in context, in a bad flu season 34 to 200 die from seasonal flu so while death is remarkably uncommon in children after influenza, there are in the states thirty-four to two hundred, depending on the sea, depending on the flu season. So uh, child deaths from COVID so far are double that. Although we are into the second season now, unfortunately, um, but it does seem to be getting worse. Perhaps with the Delta variant, Dr. Mark Klein, Children's Hospital, New Orleans. I've never seen anything like it. We are seeing children fall ill that. Uh, we just simply didn't see in the first year of the pandemic before the Delta variant came along. So clear suspicions that the Delta variant is worse in children here. 
Um, the CDC, of course, so far has not yet declared on the matter. So we have no official ruling on that. This is just the opinion of physicians uh, and paediatricians on the ground. They're, they are getting this impression. Children's admission, for example, in New Orleans went from 0 to 20 in two weeks. This did not happen with the previous variants. It does seem to be happening with the Delta variant. Now, the other concern in my mind is, is the how many of these children are going to be ill for a period of time. Um, so we looked at this uh, data from The Lancet recently. Illness duration in children of at least 28 days. Uh, in the study, 4.4% of children, uh, that's 5.1% of older children still had symptoms after 28 days. These are just the numbers that they're reporting from in the study. Uh, younger children, that's uh, 5 to um, 11 years of age, um, 588. Um, uh, the number is 588, but 3.1%. Uh, so they're the numbers. 4.4% of children overall still got some long COVID after four weeks. 5.1% in older children, 3.1% in younger children. Uh, symptoms after four weeks, typically fatigue, headache and uh, loss of smell, anosmia. And children symptomatic for at least uh, 56 days. Um, it was 1.8%. And the sample size there was 1,379. So when I reported this last week, I was actually thinking these numbers were quite small compared to the adult numbers, which they are. But this is actually saying that 1.8% of children who are becoming infected um, can still be symptomatic after... 56 days and we are dealing with pretty large numbers so last seven days 94,000 children uh, are definitively diagnosed in the United States so of those 94,000 children 1.8 percent which is what about about 1600 or something could still be symptomatic in 56 days time so just ra rather sobering there now Indonesia we're getting these reports that um, deaths in children and younger children particularly are particularly high now this could well be the case outside Jakarta where medical facilities are limited more children could well be dying so I'm hoping to get more on that soon but the, the, the data from the states is indicating that the Delta variant could be more severe in children we're waiting for something definitive from the CDC but certainly as we've seen we've got some concerned politicians if even if we haven't got some concerned politicians that's unfair many politicians of course are greatly concerned obviously um united kingdom um so cases actually going down slightly now it's about twenty three thousand new cases per day but thinking about the under 18s hospitalizations in the under 18s at the moment in the uk uh 278 um under 18s were admitted in the last week from covid in the uk um so 278 admissions in the UK. Again, you can decide whether that's a high number or not. It's much higher than we would like to see, obviously. Um, but we're actually seeing more of other infections than COVID at the moment. So uh, uh, Alast Alastair Munro, paediatrician, registrar, who's also a bit of a date, well, very much a data collector. Uh, we're extremely busy in the children's emergency department with respiratory syncytial virus. So another virus that transmits much the same as uh, SARS coronavirus 2 and norovirus which of course is largely a gastrointestinal virus but can be transmitted in the air from vomit and diarrhea but is highly contagious. Um, if you've worked in hospitals in the UK uh, like I have you will have had this infection almost certainly. You get really quite bad watery diarrhea and I was quite unwell for about a week with it. Um, so that's pretty common and of course children have got much smaller body volume so they're much more prone to fluid and electrolyte depletion. Diarrhea is a potentially very serious condition in children. Um, it is in, in adults but more so in children because they simply have less body fluid to lose from, from diarrhea. Um, so um, busy with other infections as well as uh, COVID-19. So uh, in Southampton, at least, seeing few cases of COVID-19, seeing more of these other infections. These other infections would have been common during the lockdown period, of course. But um, because children were isolating, they have probably lost some immunity to that. Um, Australia, um, locally acquired cases, 379, 24 hours. Currently active cases, 5,333. Currently hospitalised, 400. 
32, mostly in the New South Wales area. Now, just to look at that by a bit of a breakdown of the areas, Capital Territory is none, which is great. Um, New South Wales, Sydney area is the vast majority of these cases, unfortunately. Uh, Northern Territory is no new cases. Queensland, three new cases in 24 hours. South Australia, Tassie, uh, no new cases. Victoria, 20, and WA, no new cases. So that's the unequal distribution across Australia. But the thing that is concerning about Australia, um, the thing that's concerning is that Sydney hospitals are actually been shipping patients out from the inner Sydney to the outer areas already and um, the numbers are relatively small and um, they could grow considerably and there could be major strains on the hospital system in Australia which is the main concern at the moment really. So um, yeah I think we'll leave that there for today. Um, I was going to do a report from Africa but I think um, I've got a report from Africa and Australia to do, so we'll probably do those together or, or do those tomorrow. So that's us for today, so thank you for watching.